Hi, uh, today I'm going to show you how you can hide folders in the SharePoint Online Document Library view. Um, I'm going to use Power Automate Flow for this. So first, let's get started and show you what I'm using today for the demo. Um, so first of all, as you can see in here, um, this is a, a out of the box SharePoint communication site. You can tell that by the navigation and all, the, all these kind of elements. Um, and on this SharePoint side, I have a document library called Documents. Uh, I have a tile here pointing to it actually. And within this library, I've got a folder structure. Um, <coughs> as you can see, this folder structure has three root folders, leads, opportunities, and proposals. And within each of these folders, I would have at least uh, one document. And the aim for today is to yeah, get rid of these folders. So um, this library also has a couple of views, um, all documents, view A, view B, view C. I'm aiming to change view B, but just to show you what the expected end result will be, uh, I've already done this on view A. So this is hopefully how it will show up after we've um, tested with our Power Automate Cloudflow. So that's the aim for today. So let's switch to our Power Automate Cloudflow design. Um, so this is the design of the flow. Um, as you can see, these are five. This ha this flow has five steps. Um, a manually trigger a flow to initialize variables to um, yeah specify which library we want to use and which view we want to use, and then to uh, send an HTTP request to SharePoint Actions. And the first one is to retrieve the view and get details of the view, and the second one is to actually modify the view and update it to only show items instead of folders. Um, so let's go into the details of these steps. Um, a trigger is just a trigger, so no specific uh, configuration in this one. The second one is an initialized variable. Um, as you can see, I use the library name. name. Um, it's of type string and it refers to the, the actual name of the library documents. So that's the first initialized variable. Uh, then the second initialized variable, uh, by the way, ignore this note, that's for me, um, is um, a view name variable, again of type string, and this is where I enter the name of the, uh, the view, in this case view B, you could also obviously change it to view A or C. Um, so these are our two variables. And then the first sent an HTTP request to SharePoint. Um, this action uses a site address. So this would be the site where this um, document library and these views are stored. Um, normally you could drop use a drop down for this. I'm using an actual uh, environmental variable of type data source for this. Um, we are retrieving data, so this would be a get. And as you can see, the URI is a bit more complicated. So in this URI, what we're doing is we're retrieving um, the library. So that's by using the get by title method. And from that library, we're retrieving the views. Um, but we're only interested in one specific view, obviously the one from our view name, uh, view B. So that's why we're using um, a filter query parameter, a dollar filter. And in that filter, we're specifying that the title needs to be equal to whatever we specified in the view name, in this case, view B. Um, so that should give us only one view back, view B. But from that view B, we're only interested in one specific attribute value, which is the ID. So that's why you see a select query parameter um, appended to the end with an ampersand character. And we only, yeah, we just want to ID attribute. If you want different attributes as well, that you can separate it with a comma character. So, but in this case, this is sufficient. <coughs> and 
what else is inter interesting or important in this um, in this action? Um, we're using headers which specify that we don't want any metadata back. Uh, this will make the response or reading the response of this action a bit easier. So be aware that we're using the no metadata headers. So that's the first sent an HTTP request to SharePoint action. And then we have the last one or the second one. Um, this one uses the response of the first one, the ID in the URI. So that's why we have this first one. Um, the setup is pretty similar. So we have a site address again, uh, our environmental variable. Uh, this, in this case, it's a, the method is post because we want to update um, our view. It's still uh, retrieving the library by title, but in this case, the view is retrieved by ID. Uh, and for that, we're using an expression. So this is the expression we're using. It's actually here in the notes. So as you can see, it's body of this action and then from that body, we're interested in the value. And then we're using an index, which is zero, which means the first item. And of that first item within the value, we're looking for the ID of that item. So that's the whole markup or syntax of this expression. And that's between single quotes. So be mindful of that you put single quotes around this. So this should give us back our specific view, view B. And then for specific for that view B, we will update it uh, to only um, show items instead of items and folders. And for that, we're using the scope attribute in here. And the one means show only items without folders. There are other options um, like zero or I believe two. Um, so this is just an enumeration and I will share the link of that enumeration in, uh, in the description of this video. <coughs> so yeah, that setup is pretty simple. Um, one last thing to mention is that these headers are also a bit different. So as you can see in here, um, it's using verbose headers and it's also using two additional headers, the if match uh, with, uh, with the wildcard and the XHTP, uh, HTTP method with um, a patch value. So that's important to add those as well. So yeah, that's it for the whole setup. So let me run it just to prove that it works and to show you the end result. So when I run it manually, because this is a manually triggered flow, I'll run a save and test in here. And normally this takes some time. So this is perfect time to get some coffee. And when it's connecting, sometimes the connection takes a bit of time. We should get a run flow button. And now the flun flow has run successfully. So now let's switch back to the view and see the end result and refresh. Sometimes that helps. And as you can see now, the view is updated. It, it's only showing our documents. So just to recap, um, yeah, what I've just showed you is um, how you can use Power Automate flows to update your view. Um, what we've used is uh, a REST API calls to retrieve the ID of the view and after that use a patch or a post request to update the view and specifically the scope attribute, we were setting it to one. So hopefully that's useful for you guys to know. Um, and thanks for watching. And yeah, if you have questions, um, yeah, feel free to uh, leave a comment below. So thanks, bye.